In front of me, I have Nintendo's latest console, the NES Classic Edition. At only $59, I could not pass it up. It has 50 games preloaded, including all the graphically violent games my mom wouldn't let me play as a kid. But since I'm now an adult, I can play whatever I want, after my room is clean, of course. Opening up the box, we find a poster and probably some instructions. Here is the controller. The red buttons and direction pad are made of hard plastic, but the center, start and reset buttons are made of grippy rubber. The controller cable is protected by the blue plastic, and after pulling that off, it seems very, very short. The original NES controllers had a 6-foot cable. The NES Classic controller you see here only measures to about 30 inches, and I imagine most people don't plan on sitting just inches away from their big screen TV. I did see that wireless controllers are being sold, and controller extension cables are pretty cheap. I'll link those in the video description along with the console and everything else you see in this video, so you don't have to be all up in Mario's business while you're playing. I'll open up that controller in a minute. Let's go back to the box. Under the controller, there is a wall charger with a USB slot. I'll set the console off to the side and lift up the cardboard to find the included HDMI cable and the micro USB power cable that gives power to the NES Classic. And finally, here is the console itself. It is a cute little guy, much smaller than I thought it would be. It has an HDMI port and the micro USB power port on the back and the power and reset buttons on the front. The cartridge slot is purely for decoration and does not open, unfortunately. What would have been really cool is if you could put Game Boy games in this thing. Now this is where the average person would consider their product open, and where the average YouTuber would end their unboxing experience. But here on my channel we keep going. There are no visible exterior screws on the Nintendo, which leaves the only other obvious place for screws under these little rubber foot pads. I'll pop those off and stick my long shaft Phillips head screwdriver into the hole to remove the four screws and then the NES Classic will open, exposing the internals. It's pretty simple on the inside, a lot less complicated than the original NES that I opened up a few years ago on my channel. I'll link that video at the end of this one. Then we can see five more screws holding down the main board to the plastic frame. Before the main board can be lifted out, there are three connections we have to remove, two of them with these super tight white plugs, and then one little ribbon cable off to the side. This is the same type of ribbon that we've seen in multiple other cell phones before. Now that the board is out, we can see the micro USB and the HDMI ports are both soldered to the main board. Nothing's really modular here. And then the metal plate can pop off, exposing the opposite side. Here are the brains of the whole operation. All the preloaded games are here and the processor. The metal plate even has some thermal foam attached to it to help the heat dissipation. You know, since the Nintendo has some pretty intense graphics. The power and reset buttons are pretty standard. You can see how they operate here. And the controller plugs can also be swapped out pretty easily. There's only one screw holding the bottom to the frame. I'll put the console back together real quick before we tear down the controller. The plastic bracket over the power buttons, then the five screws on the main board, and each of those three little plugs. The whole build of this gaming system is incredibly simple. The plastic shell goes on top, and then four more screws go through the bottom. Don't forget to reinstall those little rubber foot pads as well. Now onto the controller. This was pretty interesting. There are six Phillips head screws on the back holding it together. And after those are removed, the back housing comes free, showing us the wraparound folded cable and the first plug. I'll explain why the cable is tucked in like that in just a second. Flipping the controller over, you can see the integrated circuit as well as the little contact pads that can sense when each button is being pressed. Believe it or not, this controller is more complicated than the original controller. I'll link the teardown of the original controller that I did about three years ago at the end of this video. The four-sided thumb pad is hard plastic on the top and then rubber underneath, with the same type of contact pads that the rest of the buttons have. Then the plastic tops of the A and B buttons just slip out of their slots as well. I'll line up all the buttons with their holes and then slip the control board back into place over top of them. The reason that the cable is wound between all these little pegs is so that when the controller is pulled or dropped or thrown against the wall, all of the stress just ends up tugging at the cord of the cable and not any of the actual plugs or the more important internal components of the controller. It's a pretty smart design, since controllers are probably the most abused pieces of any console. If Nintendo can get their inventory in order and make enough of these consoles for everyone who wants one, this is going to be one of the most popular Christmas presents of the year. The only flaw I see is the short controller cables. I will link this console and the controllers in the video description, so you can check out the current pricing if you're interested. Let me know what your favorite Nintendo game was down in the comments. If you enjoyed watching this teardown, make sure to check out the original system that I took apart a few years ago. And as always, bonus points for following me on Instagram and Twitter. You'll know what videos are going live before they are even posted to YouTube. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around.